Will this be buried? You have to hold that one down. Yeah, but can you bury the, is this made so that you can make the ladder? There's only so much pressure basically that you, you have. To. Okay, so that's, that's control there. Um, then as far as the instrumentation goes, it's very simple. Uh, as you'll hear, there's orchestra bells. There's only one set of pipes to the bass, viola and cello. And then you have two in the treble, your violin and your flute, violin and flute, basically, which either work the on. You can add a tremolo if you want. And uh, although we don't have a hook up quite yet, there is a muffler button which can take the piano off if you want to not have the piano play. So uh, the controls uh, simply uh, control the, similar to a standard player, control the rewind uh, of the, uh, both of the rolls here. Standard tempo lever, there's no mandolin attachment, but there is the sustaining pedal adjustment for the rolls like you have on a standard 88 note player. And the, the pedals down here, you have the sustaining pedal and the soft pedal, and on each end on the left is the bass drum, and on the right is a snare, <laughs> which is repetitious, but if you hit it, you can get it like a normal snare. So that's what they give you. It's not a heck of a lot to work with, but it's wonderful because it's not, it's not that hard to learn, you know. So, uh, so anyway, we're, we're going to start here with letting you sort of build up and hear it a little. And I just played this for very few minutes, so I'm certainly no photo player school graduate, but uh, at least you'll have a chance to, to hear a little bit of what it sounds like. Uh, right now, uh, I'll just quickly run through the thing to give you an idea of what the piano sounds like.
sun shines Nelly. And Harry von Tilsley wrote it, said that he, he was in a hotel or somewhere, and there was a young married couple that was very upset because it started raining and she wanted to go out and they were on their honeymoon and he says, Don't worry, honey, wait this is, wait till the sun shines, Nelly. And Harry says, There's a there's a title there. <laughs> so he went on to, to write it and he, he made all the money and the married couple never got a penny out of it. That's that's the way it goes. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, now I should do something, uh, a brief little something for Milton.
story for the uh, for the day. And I'll give you one other, a little bit of uh, uh, trivia here that would be interesting to do here. Um, I am rather interested in the music which magicians use for their acts, and you see a lot of magic posters around here. I'll play a little bit of the music that uh, uh, Harry Keller, there's Harry Keller right there. John, you have the one of Keller doing the levitation around here? No. Okay, well there, Harry Keller did a beautiful levitation, which uh, he was a great artist, and uh, he got this levitation by uh, stealing it from Askell, and actually, uh, but it was a beautiful trick. And this is the music that he, he levitated girls to. I don't know what else he did to them, but this is the, the music he levitated girls to. which I got from his son Al, that was used in the show. Uh, I don't know if it was used for the triple trunks or for the song finale, but it was certainly used in one or both of those. I'll just play a little bit of that. <laughs> Uh, this is the picture roll, which was a, a very big uh, 
brand of these things. So even if you couldn't play, you could do the same thing. By the type of music that you needed, you'd be able to you know, find something that would work. So the, the people that did this kind of thing would essentially look at the kind of music that they needed and from the music either they knew by uh, head or if it was an Egyptian scene and they didn't know a, an Egyptian piece, sure enough, they could pick an Egyptian piece. Now, the, one of the foremost composers of this kind of music was a guy named Zemechnik. He wrote most of it for Sam Fox in Cleveland. Now, Zemechnik wrote one rag, and not surprisingly, it was called Movie Rag. So I'm going to play Zemechnik's Movie Rag for you, but at the end of it, and this is something I added, in addition to Movie Rag, you're going to hear a little bit of Aloha, you know, Aloha. And you're also going to hear a little bit of Red Wing, you know, Red Wing. Red Wing and Movie Rag all at the same time, which I think is about as good of a gross finale as I could come up with, you know. I believe four, Richard, if you want to. Just put those in the floor. Oh, okay. We could play some of these for you later if you want to hear them, because they're, they're quite evocative of the era. All right. So here is Movie Rag by J.S. Zemechnik. <coughs>
Um, we have to give that a, a brief rest so I can re re replenish my glass, and, uh, and then we'll do some more a little bit later if you want to hear some specifics or requests or see the watermelon trip. Don, <laughs> like to go home with it. <laughs> You know, the one in, uh, instrument that I have, and I still have to restore, and if anybody knows somebody that has one restored. <laughs>
Next, we have a 57 key Holkheis or Hugais organ. Or Holkheis. 